Right then, Dan Byrne, here we are. And uh, obviously this strand is called My Home. And this really is your home in it. You don't just play here, but it's got real significance for you for your entire life. Yeah, I'm uh, born a Newcastle fan. I, I said when I signed, I didn't realise sort of how diehard we were um, until I thought back. Um, but yeah, the we're, we're, first game I came out was uh, Peter Biazzi's testimonial. So I remember coming, I don't remember a lot of it, but um, and then since the season after, I had a season ticket. So I had a season ticket in the East Stand and came until I sort of started playing professional, really. It feels uh, only appropriate as well doing something on St James's Park, Newcastle, that we get this weather. Obviously, both you and, me, <laughs> both you and I in big coats here, even though it's April. I'm dressed like Paddington Bear. Uh, you're in the warmest coat I've ever seen. Uh, how many of your memories do you think the days looked a bit like this? Fair, most of them. Um, I think that's probably why teams probably hate coming up yeah. Uh, uh, April and, and bad weather, probably not the best time to be doing it. But yeah, as I said, great memories. Uh, sort of Champions League nights um, were probably the ones that stick in me. Had the most watching sort of Andy Griffin score against Juventus against uh, Buffon. That was uh, one that I always talk about. So yes, yeah. yeah. We'll uh, we'll walk round to the pitch. We'll, we'll we'll do some memories that you've had here yeah. on the pitch uh, later. We're having to walk up in the stands, obviously, because mm. the pitch is soaking. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about your journey to get here because the first time you actually managed to play here was for Wigan, wasn't yeah, it? Was, yeah. I believe it was here, the Leeds' end. Yeah. You were already screaming shearer in your head, <laughs> weren't you? Yeah, we had a free kick. I think we were one 0 down. And someone whipped it in, and I and I was free. Um, but I, like, as the ball was coming in, I had too much time to think about it. And yeah, I said that I'd already thought my celebration. I was away doing the Shearer celebration in the corner, and I put it wide. Obviously, with it being a header. Um, <laughs> but it, it was a sort of great occasion just to play here. Uh, it was always something I look for, especially in the championship, because Newcastle were only in the championship for one season. So um, I had all my family here, so it was nice to say I just played here. Growing up playing football in the North East. Mm. What do you think you learned as a player from growing up here, coming through, you know, the culture of this club and then Darlington that you wouldn't have got anywhere else? I think it's more like a reflection of the city, really. I think we're like a working class city and you've got to work hard for, for what you get. I think I was always brought up in my household anyway, sort of like you, you get out of life what you put into it and sort of have no regrets and, and work hard. Um, and I think that's what the fans appreciate as well. I, I've told the lads here before, like, if we go out and sort of give 100% and leave it all out there, that's enough for the fans. Mm. Um, and I think that's that's the stuff I, I was brought up on and coming here and, and watching sort of the teams I did, like the Bobby Robson teams and the entertainers were probably a little bit I was sort of like four or five, so it was probably a little bit before my time, but it was probably more the Bobby Robson era that I remember and those lads. And even then later on, you've got like Kevin Noll and Joey Bart and Alan Smith. Those that are, don't get us wrong, fantastic players, but like they, they sort of reflected what the sort of club wanted them to be as well. Mm. well how do you found uh, how do you find your relationships being with the fans since you arrived? Obviously, the first time you come onto this pitch, you come out. Lego Hero playing, yeah. you know, explain that that feeling. I was nervous, really nervous. I, I think as I'm getting older, I don't get nervous for, for games really anymore, unless it's a sort of really big, important game. But for that one, um, sort of knowing that I was going to come out to sort of local hero play and I was going to be wearing a black and white shirt and sort of all my family was going to be there and be sort of wife and kids and, and parents, it was... Um, yeah, it was sort of emotional. Um, I was just glad to get a touch of the ball early because I'd settled down. Once I sort of touched the ball, I'd settled and got into it and we sort of had perfect start. We won the game and after that, it was more where I was like, All right, whatever happens now, I've played my first game with one. Like, I'm, I'm sort of happy. Because I think your, your dad mentioned that when the takeover happened here, you said, ah, that's it, there goes yeah. that dream. I'm never going to play for Newcastle United. And then, what, two months later, yeah, it ends up works, happening. It? Yeah, strange. Yeah, I was walking me uh, dog in Brighton and we spoke about it because I think the takeover was being spoke about for years and like, I was sort of not holding my breath because I didn't think it would come. And when I finally did, I was like, oh, yeah, I think that's probably my chance gone now because you always sort of hold that little bit of hope that it would happen. But um, it's strange, sort of, how, how football works. and. Um, like we, we, we started talking and it sort of happened pretty quickly and it gave, gave us the chance to do it. And as I said, it probably wasn't the signing that the fans were sort of excited about or buzzing for. Um, but it, it sort of went well and I sort of couldn't have went any better. 
um, than it has really. So yeah, I mean they're certainly excited for you now because you've got one of the best chance I think <laughs> in the Premier League. You <laughs> yeah. picked up. You must be pleased with that one. Yeah, I didn't think it would catch on uh, when I first heard it, but yeah, it is. Uh, it's great. It's just nice when the, you hear the sort of fans singing your name. Anyway, I think that's uh, something special. I think a lot of the times when you see players sign for clubs, they talk about the project, mm. and I, I feel like it's one of those things where people in like a normal job, an office job, whatever, can relate to football players. It's one of those things you say in an interview, like, yeah, the project really excites me. Yeah. Just like, yeah, I need a change and the money's good. Yeah. When you came in here, could the project have been literally like a piece of paper with a smiley face on it? And you're like, yeah, oh, it's good much. enough. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was, uh, I said I was happy at Brighton. Uh, I loved, loved my time at Brighton. Uh, there wasn't another team I really would have left for apart from Newcastle. So, um, and then when it started happening, I was like, oh, like, it's quite exciting and like the chance to be able to do it and sort of wear the black and white shirt was just sort of too good to turn down. I've said before, I felt as if it was sort of between like heart and head. I was at the time Brighton were eighth in the league, were flying and Newcastle were struggling. I thought I could sign for Newcastle, it could go horrifically and I might never play Premier League football again. But as I said, once it happened, it was something that I couldn't sort of turn down that opportunity. We're obviously walking down the stand here. I think mm. your seat was actually what, just along the halfway line. So yeah. your seat was up there. Uh, S105, 106 was yeah. the two seats you had? Yeah, great seats. Like they were, uh, Because it was in the smaller stand as well, like right on the halfway line, they were, uh, they were great season tickets. I like, loved them. When you play now, do you ever look up there and just think about Little Dan, even though Little Dan was probably <laughs> still quite big? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I think it's... Like, I try not to think of back too much because I think like you can sort of get caught up on it all and sort of like see your journey. It's probably more something I look back on when... I've sort of finished playing and sort of kind of appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I think, like, as I said, the first couple of games I was sort of really emotional for because it was like Newcastle and then you just sort of get straight back into like, oh, it's, this is what I do, this is what I've done for years. This is, it's just the same old game, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, how close are we to where you scored your Gallagher goal? Leicester uh, City, yeah, quarter final when of the I, when League I Cup. It up anyway. Um, I remember we were. I think we've been pressing a little bit and then they went long and, and the ball come over and there was just sort of a bit of a combination between me and uh, Joe Linton and, and Joe Willock and I took a great touch, I'm really surprised, I took a great touch <laughs> and another one and then as soon as I hit it I think it's, you yeah, goal scorer say it all, all the time don't you, like, the second I hit it I knew it was in um, and it was that, that sort of thing and just I think the sheer shock on my face that I'd scored a right foot goal in, <laughs> in the Gallagher and I knew it would be like that I knew it wouldn't be a header because it's never a header it would always be, have to be something that was that was like that for, for it to be a goal and all my family well, I've got a box in the corner there at the Gallagher and that's where like my sort of wife and my kids and uh, my mum and all my mates sit and um, sort of do it at, at that end and, and be able to go and sort of celebrate in that corner was, like, it was amazing. Like, I'll sort of never forget it. Talk to me about that Wembley run as well because mm. your, your dad wrote uh, an open letter mm. about what it meant for him and, and walking up Wembley Way, was it 96? Yeah. He walked up there with you, obviously the Champions League nights and then being able to go through that but see you on the pitch. How much did it mean to your, your family and your friends just to have all those moments on the run? I know the final didn't go mm. the way you would have liked it to but so many special moments just on the way. Yeah, I think and it was something that we'd spoke about at the start of the season. I think sort of in years gone by, cup competitions have sort of been secondary to the league because we've always wanted to stay in the league. But at some point that's going to have to change. We need to win something that's been so long for this club and as a fan base that we've, we've not done that and that has to change. So the reason I think I probably loved Newcastle as much and wanted to play football was because I think my dad did and you you want to sort of have that relationship with him and you want to be as passionate about something as he is and I think that's what's sort of got us into football and it's the same that like not just my dad, me sort of my mum, my brother, my wife, all my friends I think that I can feel sort of how proud they are that I'm I'm playing sort of for Newcastle. Like the day I, the day I signed here uh, on deadline day, even just I had me both my parents here and my wife, and even just putting on the black and white shirt when I was taking photos, I was like, it's just I couldn't have been sort of any more sort of proud. If you know what I mean, I could see sort of how emotional me sort of parents and, and my wife were, and it's uh, yeah. It, I think looking back on it, that'll be what I'll be sort of most proud of. And you got your favourite shirt number as well. Got my favourite shirt number 33, yeah. I think it's always good that it's 33 because no one really wants it, but I always <laughs> want it wherever I go. Just so I think three was my lucky number and I never used to get three because obviously I wasn't a fullback. Um, look at you now. Look, look at you now. now. I should have the three, shouldn't I? But I think now that I've had 33, it's just something that um, 
I'll keep. I'm like, I feel comfortable with it, and, and I want it. So. Speaking of kit, I know you've got a, a captain's armband at home. Yeah. How long were you captain for? 5-1 uh, win against Brentford, wasn't it? How, how long were you captain four for? Four or five minutes? No, probably 20 minutes or something. So, um, But yeah, like as I said, to watch Shearer growing up and see him be sort of count, captain of the club and, and, and lead the team out, it's something that I wanted to do and I'd love to do it from sort of the start and have that opportunity. We've got a leadership group, so we've got a lot of leaders in the team. And, and like, as I said, looking back, That'll be something I'm really proud of from where I started to captain the team in the Premier League to playing the same as part is an amazing achievement. Aren't you? How much have the setbacks motivated you? Because I, th I think you like to prove people wrong mm. a little bit, don't you? Yeah. And how much do you feel like just this last what season and a half now you signed last January, so just over a year, how much do you feel like you've proven people wrong? Yeah, I think I've proven a lot of people wrong. I think I've said that probably fans were not disappointed, but um, they were probably after other players when when I signed here. Um, but I, I love proving people wrong. I can sort of see it when I'm playing against players, knowing that they think that they're going to have the better. So I love always doing that, and I, I sort of thrive with that when people doubt. Is I always feel as if um, like I, I can can prove them wrong, and I have throughout my whole career. I think every time it comes to the summer transfer window, we're we'll either bringing a centre back or a left back, and I always feel like I end up playing, um, and I'll sort of continue to do that until one day I'll not, obviously. <laughs> one day in ten years when you're on BT with Croucher. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think it's just something that pushes. I've, I know that I've been doubted. I think it's probably. A lot of things, probably the journey that I've been on, where I come from, probably my height. People saying that I can't play a left back because because of, of my height and I'm not quick enough and all that. But I still play week in, week out, and um, I still think I give a good account of myself. So. Well, Dan, keep proving people wrong. Thank you very Newcastle much. are doing it as well. It's yeah. been a pleasure. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Cheers.